Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia has not abandoned its plan of hitting Ukraine with airstrikes and cease power blackouts as its last hope. In his nightly address, Mr. Zelensky says Russia is still counting on blackouts, calling it their last hope. Russian missiles, artillery and drones are set to have hammered targets in eastern and southern Ukraine as global economic powers pledge to beef up Kyiv's military capabilities with a focus on air defenses. The group of seven promised to meet Ukraine's urgent requirements after President Volodymyr Zelensky appealed to the virtual G7 meeting for modern tanks, artillery firepower and long-range weapons against Russia's devastating invasion. We have to be aware that Russia has not abandoned this tactic of terror. Any absence of mass missile strikes simply means that the enemy is readying new attacks. Russia is still counting on blackout. This is the terrorists' last hope. Among other things, we must gather the maximum of global capabilities to overcome the Russian mine terror as soon as possible. And I thank once again all our partners who help. I thank all our heroic workers of the State Emergency Service our police and the military who carry out the mining. Russia is dismissing a report of three-step peace proposal from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky saying Kyiv needs to accept new realities. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskyov says the progress would not be possible without taking into account these realities, including Russia's capture of territories from Ukraine. He was responding to a request by Zelensky to leaders from a group of seven powers on Monday for more military equipment, support for financial and energy stability, and backing for a peace solution that would start with Russia withdrawing troops from Ukraine. Russia has repeatedly said it's willing to hold peace talks, but it does not see Ukraine and the West, which is supplying Kyiv with weapons, as ready to do so. In the meantime, Ukraine's allies have arrived in Paris to provide urgent aid to help the country get through freezing winter temperatures as Russian forces target civilian infrastructure across the country. About 70 countries and institutions discuss what can be offered between now and March next year to maintain water food, energy, health and transport. A second meeting between France, Ukraine and some 500 companies is expected to see what can be invested and done in the short to long term. French President Emmanuel Macron welcomed Ukraine's First Lady Olina Zelenska and Prime Minister Denis Shimol at the conference saying there is an agreement on removing heavy weapons from Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and the talks were underway on the modalities around this. Ukraine's Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov and his Swedish counterpart Paul Johnson have visited the southern port city of Mykolaiv. A video released earlier today showed the two ministers inspecting Ukraine's cruiser Ukraina, which is currently docked in the port. And later, Johnson attended an awards ceremony for Ukrainian servicemen and said his country's support for Ukraine is top priority, not just for the Ukrainians, but because of what he says it is is its impact on Sweden's security. On the day of on the day Johnson visited Mykolaiv, Ukraine's armed forces said on Facebook 15 drones have been launched against targets in the southern regions of Odessa and Mykolaiv and 10 had been shot down. President Vladimir Putin will not be holding his traditional televised year-end news conference this month. Kremlin made this known 10 months into the Russian stuttering invasion of Ukraine. The event is a staple of President Putin's calendar, giving him the chance to showcase his command of issues and his stamina as he sits alone on a stage in a large auditorium for a question and answer session the reporters, uh, with reporters that can last as long as four hours. The Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskyov was asked in a call with reporters whether a date had been set for this year's big news conference. He replied, no, there won't be one before the new year, and in the president would find other ways to communicate with journalists, noting he had held other news conferences, including on his trips abroad. Peskyov says the Kremlin would advise later on a date for another annual set piece, uh, Putin's annual speech to both houses of Russia's parliament, similar to the U.S. president's annual State of the Union address. 
A major breakthrough has been announced by U.S. scientists in the race to recreate nuclear fusion. Physicists have pursued the technology for decades as it promises to a potential source of near limitless clean energy. Earlier today, researchers confirmed they have overcome a major barrier, producing more energy from a fusion experiment than was put in. But experts say there's still some way to go before fusion powers homes. The experiment took place at the National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. Nuclear fusion is described as a holy grail of energy production. It works by taking pairs of light atoms and forcing them together. This fusion releases a lot of energy. It says the opposite of nuclear fission, where heavy atoms are split apart. Fission is the technology currently used in the nuclear power stations, but the process also produces a lot of waste that could use to give out radiation for a long time. It can be dangerous and must be stored safely. Nuclear fusion produces more energy and only small amounts of short-lived radioactive waste. And importantly, the process reduces produces no greenhouse gases and therefore does not contribute to climate change.